All right, hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Imanshu, and we'll continue understanding use cases through which we'll master and develop our understanding on Apex a bit better. So this is the Apex Masterclass curriculum. We are probably in about chapter 60 or uh, around 60 or 70. For those of you who are looking at this video as the very first video, I'll suggest you start from the very first chapter and then you come here. And for those of you who are following along, let's understand and discuss use case 13. So use case 13, write a method to find the name of a person from the email address provided, right? There's a small note that all email addresses will be in a company format. Let's assume that the email address format is going to be first name underscore last name at the rate company name dot com. All right. So this is just for the sanity and the sanctity of this use case. But in real life, you don't get email addresses written properly or they are in different formats. So that's more like data massaging and data refactoring. But in this use case, we'll try to understand how to use those string functions and how to get this use case done in a happy path scenario. OK. Great. Let's jump into our Salesforce uh, Visual Studio code and I am going to create my new Apex class. So I'll say Control Shift P or a Command Shift P on a Mac. I'll say Create Apex class and this is Apex Use Case 13. All right. Just there's a misspelled. All right. Right. I'll get rid of my constructor because I do not need it and I'll get rid of the with sharing keyword for now even that's not needed all right I'll go ahead and create a new method and that's called public static void check email address or rather generate first name and last name right this is my method name and what is this method going to accept as an input it is going to accept an email address which would be of type string yeah perfect now this method is going to accept an input of email address. However, what is it going to return? It is going to return the name of the person, meaning it is going to return a string type. Yeah. So I'll simply say return full name. Now, what is full name? I have to declare and define full name. So I'll say full name is equal to empty and that should be fine. All right. Great. That's just our template. Now, what, what do we need to do? We basically need to extract information from an email address so the email address template is going to be first name underscore last name at the rate company name dot com yeah so how do i extract the first and the last name and then combine it together and display it to the user or return that as the result that's the use case right so if i were to find a function that could tell me or probably hint me everything that comes before a particular keyword or a character that would be helpful how if I were to say, if the string contains an at the rate sign, give me everything that is before it. That will extract the first name and the last name from your result. Yeah. So let's take a look at the string functions and let's try to find out whether that exists or not. So I'll say string functions apex. String class. And what we are essentially trying to do is we are trying to find a substring of the email address, right? So I'm just trying going to use that particular keyword so that I am able to browse this documentation a bit faster. And if I search for substring, you see it has contains, which will give you a result of true or false, whether a keyword is contained or not. But that's not what we want. We want to extract data out of our email address input. So let's continue. It says count, count matches. What else? index of I don't need the index I need the actual result right index of this is all index of I, I don't need to look at this last index of is also something that tells you the last occurrence occurrence of a particular keyword that's not something I need so I'll keep continuing and I'll find something called substring before yeah this is what I'm looking at so if you see substring before is a method that that's available and it returns the substring that occurs before the first occurrence of a specified separator now you'll say Imanshu, how did you directly land up here because because i know that this is the method but because you do not know you'll have to type it out using substring or some keyword right substring would be the relevant keyword here and then you should look at all the functions and you should see whether it matches the use case or not that's how you, that's how you'll know about 10 different functions and you'll understand okay this 11th one is my use case the other 10 were fine but not that i need at the moment 
okay so substring before if i click on this it tells me it returns the substring that occurs before the first occurrence of the specified separator which is pretty much our use case i want to look at everything that is before the at the rate symbol right so what i can do i can use this particular method i'll say email address dot substring before you see the option is available here the method is available and what should be my argument the argument should be the keyword or the character and that is at the rate symbol all right so what is this going to return this is going to return extracted string this will contain first name underscore last name because it will give you everything before the at the rate make sense all right so that's our first step we have been able to extract everything that's before at the rate now what do we need we need to get rid of the underscore and we need to split our result into two things first name and last name right so what can i do i can simply use the string function and that would basically be extracted string string dot split and i want to split it by what i want to split it by the underscore because that's sitting in middle and that will split my in my current string into two different parts first name and the last name okay so what is this going to return this is going to return two things rather two strings rather first name comma last name what does that mean it is a list of string or can be written as string array makes same same thing right so i'll declare it or def define a list variable i'll say list of string i'll say splitted names is equal to extracted string dot split underscore does that make sense right so what was step one step one was extracting everything that is before the under at before the at the rate and the second thing was splitting the result by underscore so that we could extract two things the first half of the name and the second half of the name right what can i do now i can put a check if split names dot size is equal to equal to 2 when will it be equal to equal to 2 when there's always a first name and a last name right only then what do i need to do i can simply say full name is equal to splitted names of index 0 plus i can put a space here and i can say splitted names of index 1 how am I sure that these two indexes will be available because the size is equal to 2 meaning the array element or the list or the collection element will always have the index 0 and 1. So this will not give you a null pointer exception and this will not fail for sure because it will only go inside if the size is equal to 2. Make sense? And that's it. That's our use case. Alright. What is one more check we can put? We can put if extracted string is not blank so how do we put not blank we'll say string dot is blank is not blank we'll use this particular method and we'll do all of this only if the extracted string is not blank save and that's all we can go ahead and deploy this particular code to our org all right i hope that made sense this has been deployed let's go to our developer console and let's refresh and let's search for apex use case 13 how do you search by a keyword you can simply use the asterisk sign basically see the name of the class is apex use case 12 right let's say you just remember 12 or 13 so what you can do is you can put a asterisk sign and you can say 13 so this will give you all the apex classes with which have 13 in their names ending with 13 okay let's say you wanted to find all the all the apex classes which have the keyword use case so what would you do you will type use case right but that will not give you the result so you'll have to put a regex operator see now you are getting apex use case one two three four all of that all right so now let's quickly search for the 13th use case i'll type 13 this is our use case i'll open this here and i'll execute i'll say apex use case 13 dot generate first name and last name and i'm going to give it a valid email address i'll say salesforce underscore makes sense at the rate gmail.com all right so ideally it should extract salesforce and then make sense and give me the full name i'll say execute executed fine loading the debug logs i'll say debug only and you see the first name and the last name have been segregated as expected awesome cool so that was use case 13 one more thing i would like to talk about here is what what did we really do here in this bit if you can see i might 
want to increase the size of the font maybe it will be helpful yeah so we checked whether the extracted string is blank or not what does that mean that means that first name underscore last name exists that is when it will go inside this if condition right now when it is going inside this if condition instead of doing all of this can i simply check like just hear me out can i simply check if the extracted string contains underscore replace underscore with a space can I do this that even that will give me the full name right so that's another way of doing it as simple as that so I'll simply say if extracted string dot contains what does it contain does it contain an underscore if it does contain an underscore I want to go inside and simply replace the underscore with a space that's it even that will solve our use case I don't need all of this code, all of this split and all of this uh, index related work. I don't need to do all of that. Did that make sense? Does this particular code make sense now? I'll go ahead and deploy. Let's give it a try and let's see if even this results gives us same result or not. Okay, I'll refresh my page here so that the Apex class is loaded. Yeah, and now I'll simply execute my method again. All right, let's give this a try and say execute. So this should give me the result Himanshu space Maheshwari. Compiled fine, debug logs are open. Himanshu space Maheshwari is the result. Okay. Awesome. Finally, you might ask Himanshu, you showed us two ways. What is the right way? What is the wrong way? There's no right and wrong way as as if if you are able to solve the use case, if it is bug free and code error free, there's no right and wrong. That's that's the good thing about writing code. Um, everyone writes in their own way and pretty much every solution is unique and it's different. It should just solve the use case and the business purpose. That's it. Awesome. That was use case 13. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.